Hi there. Let's quickly create a native script app with the uh, native script 3D touch plugin and that was my cat leaving the house. Um, so this is the repository and this is the readme where you'll essentially find everything, everything you'll need uh, to add this plugin and use it. So what I'm going to do is create a new native script app, add four uh, quick actions and then demo it to you. So the first thing we'll do is create a new uh, native script app. Uh, TNS create 3 touch test dash dash template and I want to use this template because it supports TypeScript just for fun. You might as well use it with JavaScript it has the plugin repository has all the instructions how to use it with JavaScript as well. But I like TypeScript a bit better these days. So I'm creating this new repository here and I'll cd into it and of course I need the iOS platform to do anything useful let's try it like this you might as well add Android as well because we're gonna check if uh, 3D Touch is available which you also need for iPad and older iPhones um, but yeah let's stick to iOS for now so First thing here is adding the plugin. Here we go. And well, let's see what we have. Let's open up Visual Studio Code in this folder. So what we have now is an app folder and the platforms with iOS installed and our package JSON, which also says, hey, we have the native script 3D test plugin over here. And I just released this 101 version which has better TypeScript support, so that's awesome. And there's now this, uh, also this references DTS file which wires up all uh, TypeScript definitions for your project. And because you're going to use this plugin and you also want autocomplete and type checking for this plugin, you can go ahead and add that line over here. So now you're all set up. Let's look at our uh, code here. So what you want to do is first check if uh, 3D Touch is available. So let's uh, already run this app on my iPhone which was attached here. Let's drag it a bit over there and then you can see what this uh, TypeScript Hello World uh, template does. It should look very familiar to you. So, but what you'll see is the familiar tab button which uh, will update the message on tab and this on tab method is defined here in the TypeScript file and that's over here and while uh, you're looking at the console you'll see that it actually um, built the IPA but this is a bit of an oddity I sometimes have when I deploy to a real device especially now that I have iOS 10 beta installed which uh, also shows this problem but what you can do after uh, you build the IPA you can use this npm package called IPA deploy and then the name of your IPA so this in full and then it will just copy the IPA to your device and now you'll see that the app is here and when I launch it on my device you'll see the familiar template with the tabs. Alright, so let's continue by adding, uh, sorry, the TypeScript instructions, adding your plugin here. Import 3D Touch from NativeScript 3D Touch. And because you added the uh, TypeScript reference previously here, your model file also is able to resolve it and you can see all available functions inside this class. So let's uh, instantiate it. Uh, let's do that over here because why not? So this is the on tap version. We instantiate the object and then let me just copy over these bits and then what I have here is let's indent it a bit more is the available function 
which will give you back this boolean. It will say, uh, if available, let's alert it. And then yeah, alert it here as well in case it's not available. And you can run there. And while that's compiling, we'll look at um, what we're going to do next. Because there's two options with the 3D Touch plugin. You can uh, configure quick actions dynamically uh, by, uh, well, programmatically adding them to your home screen icon from your code. But you can also do it statically, which means uh, that your shortcut icons are available directly after installing the app from the App Store. And what you need to do then is um, adding a bit of configuration to your plist. This is all documented by Apple, but I have also took the liberty to uh, provide an example in the README and document the, all these bits here as well. So you can also look at the README. So let's add a few to your configuration. Your app, app resource iOS directory overrides anything in the platform's iOS directory, which is very convenient. And let's just add it to the end here. And a few, well, especially this bit needs a bit of clarification. And there's a UI application shortcut item icon file, which is uh, configured to have the value i, uh, which is a file that iOS will look for in your resources folder. So I have this file over here and also this one I'll need later. And let's just go ahead and uh, paste them in the relevant folder. Let's do it like this. So now they're in here. And let's look at what we previously added. We added the is available function. So we tap and now it says, yeah, it's available because my device is actually uh, iPhone 6S. Um, so, but now I've also added these new icons here to our plist, right? So let's see what that does to our app. Let's compile the app again. And in the meanwhile, let's look at what we're gonna do next. Because now we want to add the dynamic uh, icons, right? So what we, and what we also want to do is uh, once you tap on an icon, shortcut icon, uh, you want to deal with it in your app. So, so let's see if we press the icon. Yeah, awesome. Now we have the shortcut icons. So the first one is the I from P list, which is the first one, which has the awesome subtitle. And the second one is the compose, this one. And this is just a standard uh, supplied iOS icon which you can look up in the Xcode documentation there's a link in the readme uh, and now the interesting bit here is that we have this type and it's also here and this type uh, will be passed to your app when you press one of these icons so I'm pressing uh, the one at the top it will launch your app and crickets because we didn't wire it up yet so let's open up um, the app TS. This is the place where your app is bootstrapped and before it's actually started you want to uh, possibly route to a different page inside your app. So you don't want it to load the main page perhaps you want to load something else. So this makes a lot of sense to put it over here and it's also what the readme suggests you to do. Sorry for the scrolling about. I'm looking for my own documentation regarding this. So capturing the action. So here's your apps file and you now have this import and the start which I also have here. And you want it to change to something else. You want to import 3D touch again and then you want to do something with the past in type. So the default, or sorry, not the default, in, in the readme, this example just uh, locks something to the console. And then if the shortcut icon type 
is beer in this case, then we'll route it to the beer page, otherwise, well, whatever. But for this example, we'll just do a simple alert. But since your app is busy loading, you can't just say alert, you need to add a little timeout. So, uh, hang on. Okay. Okay, uh, alert, blah, de, blah, de, blah, and let's add a little delay. Of course, in your production app, you don't want that delay. Um, man, so how hard can it be, right? Uh, let's make this an alert, like I said. And what it will say is, your app was launched by shortcut type, type and shortcut item uh, title. And this is, again, this is uh, strongly typed with TypeScript. And it will also tell you uh, well, the documentation for this property because that's defined in the uh, TypeScript definition file that is shipped with the plugin. So uh, this should suffice to. Um, uh, show an alert after you've launched it uh, through this statically added quick launch action but we also want to add dynamic actions right so let's do this right away example over here which you'll just copy and then we'll go back to that tap action again because that's pretty convenient so if it's available and we know that by now we're going to add the uh, quick actions and let's see once they're added you'll get this promise which will alert that they have been added and oh, there's this TypeScript thingy over here that's just a, a little tidbit declare or just a a class that's unknown by the TypeScript compiler, so we're just, we'll just help him a bit. And this is actually a, a defaultly provided icon file by the iOS SDK. And we're also adding an icon template, which is our own icon, which is this beer icon we added previously to the resources folder. Um, so this should suffice and let's compile our app again and now we have all bits in place really so if 3D touch is available we're adding uh, dynamic quick actions we already had static quick actions we're handling uh, any launched uh, action through this method over here and you would typically want to route somewhere uh, to a different page in your app or whatever and you can do it uh, this way like it's provided in the example so let's put it in the device and there it is again and you'll still see that we have these two statically added quick actions let's just launch one and now it says this alert and when we do the tap and hey we added the two dynamic actions so now let's close the app again and we should have all four actions over here and there's even a nice beer action at the bottom. So why not tap it and here we go and it says hey your app was launched by the shortcut type beer with title beer tested. Alright that's it. Uh, let's say add it to your app because it makes everything look so cool and up to date and native script rocks, etc. <laughs> See ya.